net zero targets are flawed. That's according to our next guest, and that is a very special guest. His name is Andrew Forrest. He is the chair of Fortescue. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much for your time. A huge honor to be able to talk to you about this very important topic. So you say net zero is flawed. Why should the world be looking at real zero? Carolyn, thank you. Well, quite simply, uh, real zero is the ability of this planet to use the technology it has right now. It's evolving. It's getting better very quickly. But to use the technology we have right now to stop burning all fossil fuels by 2040, if we did that by 2030, we've got a 50-50 chance of avoiding the worst ravages of global warming. That's not going to happen. Fortescue is going to make it happen. We're a huge industrial company, massive polluter. We'll go real zero. We'll stop burning all fossil fuels easily this decade, not next, this decade. And we're saying to the world, if you want to hold that planetary boundary to a future which is inheritable, tolerable for your kids, then we must go real zero. We must stop burning fossil fuels by 2040. And I say this because I'm watching now switch from business to science, the, the global carbon absorption beginning to break down across the planet which we've always relied on to mitigate some of the worst effects of our artificial carbon dioxide emissions. With that breaking down and carbon dioxide pollution going through the roof, record every year, thank you, Net Zero 2050. You're completely failing organic life. You're completely failing humanity. Now is the time to walk away from Net Zero 2050 as being really anything but a con to maintain fossil fuel. I've had the major oil and gas companies say to right. me, Hey, Dr. Forrest, we're going net zero barrel of oil by 2050. Well, that means there's no change. We've got to go real zero 2040. Andrew, that sounds very noble, and it makes a lot of sense. That said, there are so many hard to abate sectors, and, and you're in one of them uh, where the technological innovation isn't quite there yet in terms of bringing the emissions down. What's the problem with offsets? Ah, uh, well, offsets just don't work. Carbon sequestration. Um, is really an old lie waiting for the next idiot politician to come along to believe it. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked only for 60 years. Um, where it's been tried in Australia and around the world, it works maybe one in 20 times. That's an absolute failure. You wouldn't put the future of the planet on something which is an absolute failure. Fails 19 out of 20 times. That's carbon sequestration. Carbon offsets, well, you really want to know it's a cosy relationship between the fossil fuel sector and the big banking and finance sector. There's lots of trade there, there's lots of commissions to be made, there's lots of money changing hands. Has it done anything for global warming? Has it stopped at one dot? Not a bit. Has it made money for bankers and fossil fuel companies? Buckets. Congratulations on that, but that's not going to help the planet. Helping the planet, we need to go real zero 2040. We know we can, and yes, you say, Carolyn, wisely, I'm in a very hard to abate sector. But if we fully abate our, our company, big heavy industrial company, billion litres of diesel being burned a year, if we fully abate that, if we fully get rid of that entirely with green electricity and green hydrogen, just tech which is already here now, by 2030, then the rest of the world can do it by 2040. Um, I will say that, uh, obviously, your company has been pushing for that move into a green hydrogen company, but you've also had to adjust your targets in that respect a little bit, given the feasibility of, of reaching those targets. Obviously, your business, Andrew, is still very much reliant on iron ore. And I just want to get your take on the recent stimulus measures out of China. Uh, since then, iron ore prices, they've skyrocketed up by more than 20 percent. Uh, did you pop the champagne bottles when you heard of that stimulus? No, look, uh, I didn't bother when it went down. I didn't bother when it went up. I mean, we, we run the most efficient mining company in the world. We have the lowest operating costs in the iron ore sector. We started from scratch. We've driven new technology into our sector. We've broken that sector into a very competitive, major critical mineral supply. Iron ore is key to the future of the planet. However, green iron ore and green iron metal will help us drive to real zero 2040. And I'm saying, OK, mining industry, hard to abate. Steel industry, hard to abate. Shipping industry, hard to abate. There are full solutions to those three very hard to abate industries. 
We just need the leadership now to take it. And I say to all those leaders who say to me, say to the world, say to their kids, oh, you know, we can't, we can't do it. My company can't do it. I can't do it. I mean, you don't understand. I, we can't actually do it. What they're really saying is that you can't do it. And I'm saying to each of those chief executives and those political leaders who use the words, I can't, say, OK, what about you get off the stage and let on a younger or wiser leader who can, someone with a bit of ticker, because the technology is there. We know the world can go real zero 2040. And I'm reaching out to the business people and politicians across our planet to say, it's time now to walk away from this proven fantasy, net zero 2050, and adopt real zero 2040. We can, we must, let's do it. Andrew, I've got to take you back to iron ore prices. Given the China stimulus, um, they're back above the crucial $100 mark here. Uh, that makes it profitable. Will they stay above that level? Look, uh, the, the, I would never bet against the Chinese economy. I mean, everyone has. They said, you know, they're, they're relying on the United States. You know, without the United States, their toast um, tariffs coming on from, uh, from uh, or tariff, greater tariff threats from uh, the uh, presidential candidate. So I just say, look, uh, why bother betting against China? They're going to emerge. It's our job to make sure they keep to emerging peacefully. They've always said, we're going to emerge peacefully. Well, great. That would be a fabulous achievement. Betting against China is betting against the most technologically advancing major population in the world. They have one responsibility in that leadership, and that's to lift their, world, their, their people, 1.4 billion people, out of poverty into the middle class. They're on their way of doing it. I think if I was a North American, why pick a fight? You know, if I was a North American, I'd say, hey, we're going to have more than one best friend. So, yes, I do think that iron ore prices will stabilise. I wouldn't bet against the iron ore price, but neither, Carolyn, would I try and predict the iron ore price. And any prediction I make, well, at least I know that won't happen. Can I get your prediction, too, on further uh, M&A action in your space? Obviously, we were hoping for a big deal in, in the uh, basic materials space earlier this year. It didn't materialise. That was a huge bet on copper. Should there be more consolidation in your space? I think there should be more organic growth. I mean, the world is not short of copper. It's not short of lithium. There's nothing rare about rare earths. We've got plenty of that fundamental material to all of them, which is iron and steel. So we're not short of any of that. What I'd say is instead of taking a shortcut with your checkbook um, and buying out another company, why don't you increase supply? There's organic growth possibilities available to mining companies all over the world. We have a massive portfolio at Fortescue from Latin America to Africa, all over the world. We've got this huge portfolio of resources. I say to my colleagues at the big end of town, instead of trying to buy someone else, build your own projects. Let's get the supply cranked up. Let's get the green energy transition going with the materials, with the critical metals which we can supply. Uh, you call for more organic growth. Are you in the market for M&A? Am I? Look, I'd never say never. Um, we, we have the last um, geared balance sheet. We've got more cash than debt on our books. Um, we're a very strong company, very strong cash flows, $80, $120. It's a very strong cash flow company. Um, I would rather... Um, yes, there's, there's exciting targets around Carolyn, so never say never, but I would rather say to you the prospect of rolling out a technology which has seen trucks bigger than this massive room I'm in or ships bigger than this building are going fully green. That technology is available. We can charge our trucks in less than 30 minutes. Our racing cars, Fortescue Zero is a high-tech company. Our racing cars are the fastest electric cars on earth, bar none. You can just see the results of the Formula E Grand Prix around the world. They use our drivetrains, they use our battery systems. We can charge those cars in 22 seconds. Now, I want to roll that technology out to the world. That really excites me. That's going to drive the economic growth the planet needs. That's going to drive the investment the planet needs. That's going to drive investment from Northern Africa to Southern right. Africa to Latin America, across Europe, across Asia. Right. That new technology is what we need.
Andrew, thank you for taking all of my questions. Appreciate it. Andrew Forrest, the chair of Fortescue.